Luke chapter 10, or 8, verse 10. Uh, I'm seeing this heresy that's taking over at large. It seems that this false doctrine, this doctrine of hell, it's a universal, damnable heresy. And I'm not going to deal with it in this message, but it's a heresy, people, that Jesus forgives future sin. In other words, the idea is that he forgives a sin that you have yet to commit. That was baked up in hell, people. That opens the door to lasciviousness. That is lasciviousness. License to sin. Beware. Anytime, anytime a doctrine comes along that promotes the idea that you can continue, continue to sin, I mean, they're going as far as saying that God welcomes failures. And they lightly talk about repentance. I hope you had an opportunity to hear the message we shared about godly sorrow that worketh repentance unto salvation. So needed. So needed in this hour. That's why we changed the title of our channel on YouTube. Deliverance from Sin. So needed in this hour. People need to know they can be free from sin. Amen. And must be if they're going to go to heaven. You can't continue in sin and go to heaven. Even Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace should abound? God forbid. Amen? In fact, someone that continues to sin and won't quit sinning and has come to the knowledge of the truth, Scripture says God will cut them off. Eventually, he'll cut them off. So, there's got to be true repentance. Amen? Got to be true repentance. Again, that's not my message. Luke chapter 8, if you like to follow in the reading of God's word, Luke chapter 8. And Jesus said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is the word of God. That, before you understand anything else, that must be established. Are you listening, people? That must be established first to understand this parable. I may know that. You're going to understand this parable. If you're going to understand actually anything that Jesus was teaching, you need to understand this parable. He said this was the parable. He says, if you don't understand this parable, he says, you won't understand anything. That's what Jesus said in his own words. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. These are the ones that are on the wayside, 
right? The devil comes and steals the word before it has an opportunity to be planted in their hearts. They on the rock, and this is not on the rock Jesus, this is talking about a stony heart. They on the rock are they which when they hear, listen to this, they receive the word with joy. A lot of folks that hear the word of God and receive it with joy, they rejoice when they hear the word of God. But they have no root. And for a while they believe. But why do they leave? Why do they fall away? In time of temptation. They don't endure temptation. In time of temptation. They fall away. Are you listening folks? And Jesus said there was a snare coming upon all the world. The hour of temptation that is coming. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard the word, they go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. No fruit to perfection. The cares, the riches, the pleasures of this life chokes out the word. But that on good ground are they which in an honest and good heart Having heard the word, they keep it. Did you hear that? They keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Amen. They bring forth fruit with patience. The verse I'd like us to focus on here out of this parable is verse 13. They on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root which for a while believe. And in time of temptation fall away. That's what I want to deal with. That's what I want to deal with in this message. Amen. The latter part of this verse. And in time of temptation, fall away. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the spirit of truth that you have sent to us to lead and guide us into all truth so that we in this hour, Lord, can live a life of victory. We can live an overcoming life. God, we ask that you will bless this message, anoint it, and bless and anoint your people to receive the truth of your word, Lord. We give you praise, glory, and honor, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And in the time of temptation, they fall away. Now, Jesus said, a great snare is coming. The hour of temptation that shall come upon all the world to try them that are upon the earth. Amen. And he also said, if you keep my word, I'll keep you from the hour of temptation. Amen. 
John chapter 6, verse 51. Jesus says, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, does this offend you? What, and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, therefore, he said unto them, that no man can come to me except it were given unto him of my father. Listen, from that time, many of his disciples went back. Are you listening? From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will you also go away? Notice what Peter says. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. What changed, people? What changed? Peter is saying, we believe you're the Christ. We believe you're the Son of God. We believe you're the Son of the living God. But when the hour of temptation came, Peter said, I don't even know the man. He denied he even knew him three times. Listening to me and to curse and swear, I don't know him. Amen. Jesus said to them when they were praying, Pray that you not enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We're in the time, brothers and sisters, that Jesus warned us of. The time of temptation is here. 
And it's going to get much worse. But the Lord said, if you keep my word, I will keep you from the hour of temptation. And we just read in a parable that if we keep the word with an honest heart, that we could bring forth fruit to perfection. Are you listening? How many know there is a falling away coming? Amen. And it was those that rejoiced when they heard the truth. When they heard the word, they rejoiced. But they had no root in themselves. They were not rooted and grounded in Christ. The time of temptation, they fell away. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Are you listening, brothers and sisters? Before that man of sin can be revealed, there must be a falling away first. Jesus said, those that fell away, they were the ones that rejoiced in the truth. Oh, my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. Just as much as it's not enough just to be sorry to be saved. It's not enough to rejoice to be saved. These folks were rejoicing. Are you listening? Those that were on the rock, they were rejoicing. Listen to me. Just because, just because you rejoice about the word doesn't mean that you're allowing the word to get rooted in you. Amen? The word of God's got to become rooted in you if it's going to produce. How many know the seed of his word? It can't stay just seed. It's got to fall into the ground and die. Otherwise, it abides alone. But if it falls in the ground and dies, the scripture says it brings forth fruit, much fruit. Listen to me. Why don't you allow the truth to be planted in your heart? And why is it that you will not allow his truth to produce his own divine nature in you? You hear with the ears and you rejoice. But his word never gets into your heart. Here we see Peter saying, we believe you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Where are we going to go? Only you have the words of eternal life. Just a little while later, I don't even know the man. I don't know him. You're listening to me. Oh, please listen to me. The time of temptation is coming. Peter said, though all forsake you, I won't. Peter was adamant. Peter was so confident I will never leave you. I die with you first. 
And he couldn't even admit that Jesus, that he knew Jesus to a little girl. So afraid, so terrified. The hour of temptation. Are you listening to me, brothers and sisters? As a snare, it came upon Peter, upon Simon Peter. As a snare. And just as a snare, it came upon them back there. So again, it's coming. The snare is coming. How many know that? <clears throat> the scripture also says in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7, Moreover, he must have a good report and of them which are without, lest he fall into the reproach and the snare of the devil. That's talking about young people that want to be in the ministry. They fall into the condemnation of the devil because they're put out there too soon because they're not ready when they get put into the ministry like a Joseph Larson. Dangerous. 1 Timothy 6, 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. Are you listening? That was 1 Timothy 3, 7 and 1 Timothy 6, 9. Are you listening? Luke chapter 21, verse 35. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. So what are you and I supposed to do, brothers and sisters? What are we supposed to be doing? Take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged. With surfeiting. With drunkenness. With the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare. Shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth? How do we escape? Watch ye therefore and pray always. How are we going to escape? Watch ye therefore and pray always that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Please listen to me. This could be one of the most important messages you've ever heard. Just because you rejoice and you say you're standing on the rock doesn't mean you're rooted and grounded in the truth. That you're rooted and grounded in the love of Christ. Are you listening to me? How many know there's a strong delusion that is coming? And many are going to fall away. Many are going to be deceived. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Who's the strong delusion coming to? That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in 
unrighteousness. Do you see? Do you see? They had pleasure in unrighteousness. Do you see who's going to be deceived? Do you see who's going to believe a lie? Do you see who the strong delusion's coming to? And do you see who's sending it? God. God. God is sending it. Brothers and sisters, there's a falling away from the truth that's already begun. It's not a falling away of doing religious things and going to church. It's not even a falling away of rejoicing in the the word, the truth. It's a defecting from the truth itself. They show that they love God with their lips. They draw near with their lips. But their hearts are far from him. Beloved, you have heard the truth today. Does God have your heart? Is the word of God being sown in your heart? Are you listening? We need to let his word grow in us, produce in us. Amen? Receive the word of God. Receive the engrafted word. Don't resist it. Don't fight it. Receive it with meekness. Hallelujah. You may not agree with it, but it's his word. Receive it with meekness. Your flesh will fight it. But receive it with meekness. It's your only hope. It's the only way you're going to be saved. Are you listening? It says they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. Isn't that what it says? They would not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They had pleasure in unrighteousness. Oh, Lord God Almighty. I feel the presence of the Lord, people. Hallelujah. The love of the truth. You say, you say that you love the truth. You say you love the truth. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth. But wait a minute. Scripture says they're rejoicing in the truth. They're rejoicing in the word. It says they're standing on the rock. And they're rejoicing in the word. Hello. What a shallow experience. You think it's enough just to jump up and down and rejoice when the preaching is being, the word of God's being preached? You think that that is Evidence enough that you're saved? How many know evidence of really being saved is shown in the life you live? 
It's the way you live. When you're not being watched or seen. How do you live in the secret place? How do you live when others aren't watching you? Because remember, God is always watching. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, know the prophet in the Old Testament, he knew what Gehazi was doing. Did not my heart go with you? How much more God? His eyes run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Everything is naked and open and bare to the eyes of him with whom we have to do. This is a generation that doesn't believe that God sees. In the Old Testament, they said that God doesn't see. God doesn't hear. But it says God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That's serious, people. Given over to a reprobate mind and given up unto vile affection. Are you listening to me? Romans is not speaking to the world, people. I know you think he is, but he's not. Look at the, the, who it's addressed to. He's not speaking to sinners, people in the world. He's speaking to those that are supposed to be believers. Somebody fell away from the truth. Somebody fell away. And remember, the word falling away has to do with defecting. You know what happens when you're in the military of the United States of America and you defect? Huh? In a time of war, time of battle, you defect to the other side. We see a lot of people right now defecting in North Korea, trying to defect to South Korea. And they got to get through a firing squad to get there, to get to the other side. And many, there's people risking their lives, defecting. Why would you ever defect from the truth? Why would you leave him? Why would you leave the only one that can save you from your sins? He tells us why. Because you don't receive the love of the truth. Amen. Those today that are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they can't love the truth. The Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. The Spirit and truth agree. The Spirit and the Word agree. If you're not being filled with the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, you're not going to hunger and thirst after truth. I've said many times the Holy Spirit's like the oil. The truth is the fire. Praise God. And you and I are like a candlestick. Amen. Praise the Lord. We need oil. We need the Holy Spirit. Not just the truth. We need both. And we need a balance. Like my pastor used to say, you get too much of the Spirit, you'll blow up. You get too much of the truth, you'll dry up. He said, but if you get a balance of both, you'll grow up. We are to worship God in spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. For some of you, that's a revelation. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen.
No flesh is going to glory in God's presence. Hallelujah. You're not going to experience revival in the flesh. When times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. It's not going to be in the flesh. It's going to be in the spirit. And the Lord is refreshing his people in this hour if we're in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord, people. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. 